Proverbs is written by Solomon, who's the wisest man that ever lived. And when you're a hillbilly like me, sometimes you've got to read Proverbs very slowly. Can I say in the book of Proverbs that sometimes within the verse, the whole context will change. The whole thought process will change. Proverbs is not a book you can just easily glean through and say you understand it. But there's a lot of tremendous truth and wisdom and help in the book of Proverbs. In chapter 27 alone, we find that Solomon deals with betoken. In verse number 1, he says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. That word betoken means assuming or take for granted. Better not take for granted you got tomorrow. We pulled up last night and seen happy 60th birthday. I asked Miss Annette, I said, who turned 60 today? <laughs> Everybody saying, happy birthday, preacher. I said, it's not my birthday. Don't get me wrong, I'm taking all the gifts, but I may never make it to 60. That's Wednesday, huh? You better not boast uh, on tomorrow. Amen. We see that he not only deals with betoking, he deals with bragging. Look at verse number 2. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, not thine own lips. Hmm? If somebody has something good to say about you, you ought to thank the Lord for it. But you don't need to be the one telling everybody how good you are. Hmm? He also deals with what's beneficial. In verse number 5, he said, Open rebuke is better than secret love. Now, secret loves all these little crushes people got on somebody, but they're afraid to tell somebody that they got a crush on them because they're fear of rejection. Well, if somebody's got a crush on you and you never find out about it, that doesn't help you at all. Right. But we don't like open rebuke, but open rebuke is far better because at least uh, we know where we stand and we know where we need to improve. Right. Right. Well, so he deals with what's beneficial. But in verse number 8... He deals with being beguiled. Verse number 8 says, As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. That word beguiled means to be distracted or to relax. Can I say in this day and age we live in, those are two things that are easy to accomplish. Get distracted or just relax. Amen. And so I want to, focus on verse number 8 and I really want to piggyback off of a thought that brother Paul Hill brought in our camp meeting but I'm interested in verse number 8 as a bird that wandereth from her nest so is a man that wandereth from his place I'm interested in that nest for a moment I just got to thinking about the work that it took to build the nest now, we've got some doves that every year decide that they're going to come and build a nest underneath our gazebo, our awning over our back patio. And every year, Miss Annette says she's not going to have them doves build, build a nest back there because they make a mess all over the back patio and all over the back patio furniture. But this year, they came and they started building a nest and she knocked it down. They started building a nest, and she knocked it down. They started building a nest, and they knocked it down. One morning, they had the nest all the way done, and I knocked it down. It was this big. I took that thing, threw it in the garbage can. The very next morning, they had the nest built, and they were sitting in it. But I watched those doves, and doves are interesting animals, uh, interesting birds, they mate for life. But I watched those birds, those doves, and really it was the male dove, I guess it did most of the work. He would fly to the neighbor's yard and he'd pick up a piece of straw, and then he'd fly to the yard behind us and pick up a stick, and then he'd fly to the other neighbor's yard and pick up something, and then he'd find something in our yard, and he was going all over the neighborhood and finding some things uh, that he could fitly frame 
together to make a nest. It's amazing there wasn't anywhere in any of our backyards a diagram on how to make a nest uh, or the materials laid out with all the uh, necessary means to make that nest. Uh, but there was something instinctive in that bird, uh, and that bird worked hard, flying all over and finding just the right part. Uh, and uh, that other bird uh, knew exactly how to weave it all together and put it all together so that it could uh, withstand wind and so that it could withstand uh, 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 rain and so that it could withstand uh, 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 the broom we was knocking it down with. I mean, that, that bird, uh, uh, she uh, had it put together. There's a lot of work to build that nest. I read somewhere that on average, most birds building a nest will work 14 to 17 hours a day. It took a lot of work to build a nest. The last time they built a nest... I thought I'd outsmart them. I ordered some of these plastic spikes that birds won't sit down on because it pricks them so they won't build the nest. They built the nest on top of the spikes. <laughs> a lot of work. A lot of work in building a nest. We also find... In looking at this text, it says, As a bird that wandereth from her nest. One thing I can say about that mama bird, that mama dove, she never leaves that nest. But there are some birds that will leave their nest. They'll get distracted. They'll see something shiny over in another yard and say, I'm going to check that out. They'll just relax and think their nest will be all right, and they just wander from it. Can I say I've noticed something about wanderers? Wanderers become preoccupied. Throughout the Bible, we're worried, or we're, we're warned about becoming preoccupied, about trusting what you see based on rather than what God says. Lot looked down at the well-watered plains of Jordan and said, Boy, Sodom and Gomorrah would be a good place to raise a family. Yeah. And he wandered from his place. Can I say that prodigal son saw all the shiny lights of the far country and said, Boy, that would be a great place to go hang out for a while. He left his place. Can I say, uh, even individuals... Like Peter left his place. Other people, like Eli, the high priest, fell asleep on the job and left his place unattended. It's very important to understand wandering starts with preoccupation. Brother Bob, I've seen that after people get preoccupied and they allow other things to cause them to wander from their place, then they get prideful. Two things happen, Brother Ron. They either get self-satisfied where they are and they don't want to hear the truth, or they get self-justified, they get real defensive, and they don't want to hear you tell them what's best for them because they know what's best for them. Wanderers also, when they get to that prideful state, don't realize they're headed for a pitfall. God resisted the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We see the work to build the nest. We see wandering from the nest, but we don't consider the wealth in the nest. The mama doves do not leave those nests because of what they have invested in the nest. It's amazing. We can be out on the back porch with a leaf blower blowing the grass off where I mow the grass and that bird just sits there and looks at me. She's not leaving her nest. Loud noise won't cause her to leave. Blowing winds don't cause her to leave. 
Why? She has something in that nest we're staying for. Been too many eggs robbed out of nests by serpents when the nest is left unattended. Brother Adrian was telling me last night, didn't even know I was going to be preaching on a bird's nest, was telling me last night that Miss Nancy looked out the back window and saw a snake, a big black snake, getting in a nest up on a tree limb, and he climbed up there with a hatchet and took care of business. Whenever I see one of them, Brother Adrian, I'm calling you, all right? I'm interested in the wealth that's in the nest. For a little while this morning, I want to preach on protecting what's in the nest. Amen. You see, my dear friends, we are blessed with a nest from God. Amen. There's been a lot of hard work in putting this nest together. Jesus went to Calvary, Amen. bled and died for the nest. Amen. Are you listening? He has fitly framed it together. He's brought people from here and there. And he's uh, 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 framed us together. And we're intertwined by the Spirit of, of the Lord. And what a blessing uh, to be a part of the nest. But if you're not careful, we'll take for granted the nest. Amen. Uh, we need to protect the nest. Say, so preacher, what's in the nest? First of all, your heritage is in the nest. Hmm? Your heritage is in the nest. Uh, Brother Bob, what a blessing. You, Miss Sonny, are here, and Miss Shannon's here, and Emily's here, and Gracie's here, and Riker's here. You know what that is? That's heritage. Huh? And, and I hope that uh, uh, they're getting enough that once we go off the scene, they'll know the difference between a good nest and a nest that's not good. One that's a shot full of holes, one that won't protect them. Uh, 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 can I say, uh, 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 Miss uh, Veronica, what a blessing to have your grandchildren up here singing with you. That's your heritage. Uh, uh, that's the future. Uh, one day, uh, the Lord don't come back. You and Brian are going on to be with the Lord. Uh, they need to know there's something about the nest. Uh, your heritage is in the nest. Uh, uh, friend, I wouldn't protect my children and my grandchildren just to anybody. Uh, hey, uh, there's a lot of places out there call themselves good nests. Uh, uh, but hey, uh, they don't have the touch on them. They don't have the insulation in them. Uh, they don't have the hard work that's been put in. Uh, they don't have the truth. Uh, they don't have uh, what's going to be able to withstand uh, in the evil day and to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, hey, uh, your heritage is in the nest. Uh, it's worth protecting. Hmm. Can I say this? Your home's in the nest. Hmm. One writer years ago said, so go the home, so go the church, so go the nation. You know why our nation's a mess? Because churches are a mess, because our homes are a mess. Do you know the home was the first institution ordained by God? Uh, long before he ordained the church, he ordained the home. Uh, do you know the first place the devil will attack? Uh, it's the home. Uh, he wants to destroy your home, every facet of your home. Uh, he wants to rip them to shreds because uh, he knows if he can destroy your home, uh, then your children will become a statistic uh, and they won't have much confidence in what you try to put confidence in them. Uh, they'll say, well, uh, uh, what's so good about church it didn't work for you and dad uh, hey uh, I'm telling you if the devil can destroy a home he will uh, your home's in the nest uh, you need to fight tooth and nail to protect the nest uh, you want your home to glorify God uh, you want the blessings of God in your home uh, hey it starts with protecting the nest my dear friends uh, thank God for a godly home you ought, to, you ought to do everything you can to insulate your home. Because hmm? I promise you the wind's coming. I promise you winter's coming. Uh, hey, it's not always pie in the sky shouting having a good time. Sometimes it's just getting through to the next day. Protect your home. Our heritage is in the nest. Our home's in the nest. Can I say the house of God's in the nest? Hmm? Uh, where would we be without the house of God? Amen. You know, the house of God is the pillar and ground of the truth. First mm, Timothy 3.15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. By the way, there are ways to behave and disbehave in the house of God. Uh, uh, 
The house of God's not to be an everything goes place. Everything's to be done decent and in order. Mm. But thou, thou mayest know how thou, to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Uh, I have no problem saying a lot of places in our neighborhood calls themselves churches are not the church of the living God because they don't stand on the truth. Mm. And can I say the house of God is not only the pillar and the ground of the church, we find the purpose of the house of God. Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And Acts chapter 1, 8, the last thing Jesus said to his disciples before he went to, up into heaven, he said, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, uh, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Huh? The purpose of the church is to preach the gospel and get the gospel out to the world. Uh, no church, no gospel. No gospel, no salvation. Everybody goes to hell. Why do you think the devil's against the church? Because Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it uh, this came to my mind when I, I read both those verses. And, and both those, the commission of the local church... And then the Lord talking about when they would be empowered, they'd be witnesses. In both verses, he'd mention the Holy Ghost. But there are so many Baptists who won't say Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Because they don't want to be Pentecostal. Well, you call me whatever you want to, but the Bible said Holy Ghost. Right. Just thought I'd throw that in. Some of you look like he's pouting. But then you got the people in the church. I mean, we find in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, how God puts the household of faith together and how he fitly frames us together. Only God could have brought this crowd together. We got folks from Ohio, folks from Indiana, folks from Kentucky, folks from the country, folks from the city, folks with no education, folks with a lot of education. We even got folks from Virginia now. And we found out that fella from Virginia can eat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next cookout, we need more food. Hey, Brother Adrian's here, huh? I'm just telling you, the house of God's in the nest. Amen. Need to protect it. The devil hates our church. Amen. The devil hates our church because take, we take the gospel out. The devil hates our church because all the missionaries we support. The devil hates our church because we love the Lord. The devil hates our church because we let lump, young people worship around here. Uh, yeah, I know some of you old folk, you say, well, there go them young people, the altar again. Say, what are they praying for now? You. Yeah. You and your cynical attitude. Yeah. Huh? Good. You know what to help you? Get around some of these young people. Get in the altar with some of these young people. You might get a fire kindled in your soul again. Amen. Old cranky pants. Uh, that's true. Because you know why I notice in, in, in nests, some of them sticks get dry. Yeah. That didn't cost you anything. That just came to my mind. <laughs> you know what else is in the nest? Hope. Yeah. Hope's in the nest. Yeah. Hope for revival. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I pray all the time God send revival. I don't care where he sends it. I just want him to send it. I want it to fan our way. Huh? We need revival in this day and age. We need to bring back that which was lost. Uh, we need folks that's focused back on the right thing, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, the only hope we have for revival is in and through it by the local church. Uh, I keep hearing about all these great revivals breaking out in these universities. Uh, imagine this, as soon as classes start, the revival's over. Uh, if true revival broke out, uh, they wouldn't even have class. Uh, they'd be calling for men of God to come and preach. Uh, and by the way, uh, I, I hear about uh, all these young people in these colleges are being uh, uh, born again and baptized. Who has the authority to baptize them? Who's down there baptizing them? Uh, I, I'm telling you what it is. Uh, it's a masquerade. Uh, real revival can't be stopped. Uh, uh, God will fan throughout a land. Uh, I've read after real revival, uh, it changes nations. Uh, it changes continents. Uh, it'll even change a bunch of hard-headed Baptists. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, huh? Amen. Amen. 
Hope for revivals in the nest. Uh, can I say hope for regenerations in the nest? Thanks be unto God, people get saved anywhere. But I'm glad I got saved at church, and we keep the doors open so folks can get saved at church. Uh, 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 but hope for folks being saved is found in the nest. Uh, can I say this? Hope for uh, restoration. Uh, hey, I know some of you got prodigal sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters out there, uh, and I know it's a burden on your heart, and I know you're praying for them. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, your prayers have not fallen on deaf ears. Uh, God's still listening. Uh, and God's a working and orchestrating in the shadows when you don't even know it's a working. Uh, but the hope for them being restored back to the faith uh, is found in the nest. Uh, hey, protect the nest. Uh, why? There's too much at stake. Uh, can I say this? Uh, hope for the remedy. Amen. Say the remedy for what? The remedy for whatever. For whatever you need, whatever I need, whatever somebody down the street needs, whatever this country needs, uh, the hope is for the re remedy is found in truth. Mm. There's folks that may have come in here this morning seeking some help, seeking some truth. That remedy is found in the hope, in the nest. And then there's the hope of rewards. I want all the rewards I can get. Amen. Say, why, preacher, are you selfish? No, I just want so much to lay at his feet because he's done so much for me. And I want to do all I can for him because he's been so good to me. Hope is in the nest. Need to protect the nest. Can I say? Him, he, is in the nest. We need to protect the nest. Can I say something about the Holy Ghost? He's the silent partner of the Godhead, but he's very sensitive. It don't take much to grieving. Don't take much to quenching. Uh, we need to protect the nest. I don't want him grieved or quenched. I want him to have a free course and have his way to deal with our hearts. See, there's a danger because if he leaves... Ichabod stamped on the nest and then there is no remedy say preacher how do we protect the nest we need to stay in our place what good's a nest if part of it's falling apart or part of it's missing need to stay in our place to protect the nest hmm? the Lord said uh, uh, he sought for a man that, uh, who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge Huh? we all have a place we need to be in our place. If we're not in a place, there's a hole, there's a gap. And that's an area, an access point for the enemy to be able to penetrate uh, and be able to destroy what's in the nest. People don't understand the importance of being in your place. But Doug talked about the whole armor of God. God gives us everything we need to stand. And having done all, the, having done therefore, stand. But here's the thing, there's nothing for our backs in the whole armor of God. Why? Because if we're all in our place, God's got our back. Amen. We get in trouble when we're out of our place, then our get back gets exposed to the enemy. Amen. A lot of people don't want to step up to their place and be in their place. See, there's no glory standing in your place until we get to glory well see we live in a day and age where people are full of vain vanity and they want that vain glory they want all the recognition right now so they just won't stand in the place stay in your place I read this week about the city of Pompeii that was destroyed by Mount Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius erupted, volcano, the earthquake under the city of Pompeii, and it was totally destroyed between the earthquake and the eruption of the volcano. A lot of archaeologists have looked at all the realm and relics of Pompeii that they've been able to discover. They say it's very obvious that when that volcano began to spew its lava, folks tried their best to flee. 
Can I say I have watched Brother Ron when the heat gets on, there's a lot of people that are ready to flee. Archaeologists found Brother Bob, a Roman soldier, who was charged with standing post at a gate. Brother Clint, they said they found him with both hands clenched to his weapon, standing in his place. As the earth quaked under his feet, as no doubt a lava approached him and probably brought his death to him, he stood his place. I exhort you, stay in your place. Stay in your place. I found this poem. It's not attributed to any author, but it says this. What matter if the clouds hang low? What matter if the bleak winds blow? What matter if I may not know the reason why these things are so? God reigns. I will be true. What matter if my friends be few? What matter where they are or who? What matter what men say or do? What matter what God leads me through? He reigns. I will be true. What matter if this life be brief? What matter if I've toil or grief? I and my Savior find relief. Of all my joy, he is the chief. God reigns, I will be true. No matter what, I must resign. No matter how the fire refine, if I but with his image shine, by faith I clasp his hand divine. God reigns, I will be true. No matter if my bark is frail, in Jesus' name I breast the gale. No matter if all else fail, my anchor holds within the veil. God reigns. I will be true. Friends, stay in your place. God reigns. The real question is, will we be true? As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. We don't need a generation any more of wonders. We need a generation of folks with willpower to just stand the test and stay in their place. Today, I encourage you, stay in your place. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come and get a song of invitation. While he's coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word pictures and the word of God. Thank you for the wisdom that you gave Solomon that he was inspired to share in the scriptures. Father, we know that the devil's hard at work, but too many times we give him too much credit. God, help us to live by faith. Help us, Father, to stay in our place. Lord, help us to protect the nest that you entrusted us with. That, God, you might be glorified in it all. Now, Father, I pray you'd speak to hearts. I know it wasn't a salvation message, but, Lord, if somebody's here is lost, I pray you'd reveal unto them their lostness. I pray they'd come and trust in Christ. Father, I pray if there's somebody here that is present in body, but their heart is cold and indifferent towards God, I pray today would be the day that, Lord, they do a pivot in their heart. They turn back to God. Lord, they're restored back to the center of thy will. Lord, I pray for thy will for each of your children. Lord, I pray you'd bless. I pray that, Lord, you'd encourage. I pray you'd edify. I pray that, Lord, whether a trial or a sword, your people would stay on the wall and stay in their place. Now, God, speak to hearts. Maybe you've spoken to somebody about something totally different. Whatever the need is this morning, God, I pray your will would be done and that you'd be glorified. 
Bless now in this invitation. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.